What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a CRM database tool with Python and Kinter. All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a CRM tool, a customer relationship management tool, big database tool using Python and Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for a one time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. OK, CRM tool. What is that? Customer relationship management. So. All right, I've got this website code me. It's my business, how I make money. People sign up for a membership. They become members, right? They're customers. I want to keep track of their information, their data. I want to keep track of their name, their address, their phone number, uh, their email address, their home address, their credit card number, maybe, um, you know, want to be able to see like what URL referred them and keep track of that. So if they came from YouTube and signed up, I want to remember that if they came from Facebook and signed up, I want to remember that if they came from somewhere else and signed up. I want to remember that uh, just all the data that you have for a customer for any kind of business. And this is a, a playlist on Kinter. We've been doing all these graphical user interfaces. So what better tool to use to create this little thing? So we're going to create this little desktop app. I haven't created it yet, so I can't show you what I have in mind, but we'll get into that in the next couple of videos. Um, so uh, we're going to get started in this video sort of downloading the database that we're going to use and all that good stuff. So I should mention we're going to use MySQL. In the past in this playlist, I've done SQLite, the SQLite 3 database. Uh, either one will work. You could use Postgres, any database you want. Uh, we've already talked about SQLite, you know, earlier in the playlist. If you're interested in that, you can go back and watch those videos. So I figured we use a different database this time. It's mostly the same, but there's a couple of little subtle differences. So might be fun to do that. So in this video, we're going to download MySQL, get everything set up, work with our connector and do all that good stuff. So head over to MySQL.com and this is the MySQL database. And this is a confusing database or this is a confusing website. It just there's so much going on here and it's kind of tricky because there's some paid versions there's some free versions. They really try to rope you into doing the paid one, you know, but nobody wants to pay for MySQL. It's supposed to be free. It's always been free. So we want the community edition. And so we have to kind of look through here and they're always changing this website. So you just have to kind of fish around till you find it. So let's click on downloads and we can see a whole list of different things. And let's see down here at the bottom, MySQL community downloads. That's what we want. And here we go. Let's see. MySQL installer for Windows. I'm on a Windows machine, so that's what I want. Now this will come with a bunch of things like the, the MySQL Workbench, which is handy. It's a little graphical user interface for MySQL. So we're gonna be doing all of that stuff ourselves, but you know, if if at a glance you just want to see what's in your database, you can just pull up the work the workbench and take a quick look. So that's kind of handy. So I think that gets installed by default. Maybe we'll look at that if we have some time. Not in this video, maybe in the next video or two. Uh, so I'm going to click on this MySQL installer for Windows. If you have a different operating system, if you're on, you know, Linux or Mac, um, they have I, probably links for that. I think it will show up if you're on a Mac. You'll, you'll see the Mac link here, I would imagine. But let's see. Let's click on this. So let's see. We're still in the MySQL community downloads. All right. So there's two different little versions here. And this one is 18 megabytes, and this one is 400 and something megabytes. And you might be kind of inclined to download this little one, I wouldn't recommend you doing that. What that is, is it's a it's a little installer file. So you download this little 20 megabyte file, megabyte file, then it will install, it will download and install this big guy here. But I find it to be a little glitchy sometimes. So I recommend don't even worrying about that. Just click this download. And it asks you to log in or sign up. You don't have to do that. Just go down here and think and click this. No, thanks. Just start my downloads. It's a confusing website. They're throwing all kinds of weird stuff in front of you. So click that. Go ahead and save the file. Save it anywhere you want. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Uh, I've already in, I've already actually downloaded it. But you go ahead and click yes. Uh, and then go to your downloads, wherever that is, and, and go ahead and click it. And if you're on Chrome, the downloads are down here at the bottom, wherever it is on your web browser, just, you know, go ahead and open that installation. 
And when you do, this screen will pop up, and this is the MySQL installer for the Community Edition. Now, there's all kinds of stuff here. You can just do the developer default, default which is what we want. This will install the SQL Server, uh, all kinds of other stuff, the Workbench. If you just want the server only, go ahead and click that, but we might as well do the, the Workbench too. It might be fun to look at. And, uh, okay, click Next. So here, check requirements, following products have fail, failing requirements. You can attempt to resolve this using blah, blah, blah. Oh, we don't really need the connector. We're gonna install that separately. Uh, so we can go ahead and click next. Do you want to continue? Yes. And go ahead and click execute. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna download and install, uh, or at least install each of these things. So this can take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the video while we wait for this to do this and we'll pick it back up as soon as it's finished doing its little thing. Okay, so it takes a few minutes, but uh, especially the router or the shell here took a couple of minutes to go through, but everything now is complete, so we can click Next. And now it's gonna configure some stuff, so click Next again. Now we just want to leave the defaults for all these things. Here it's asking, or it's showing the port, you might write that down just to remember it but not necessary. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining here in Vegas. Wow, it, desert, never rains here. All right, we'll just push through the rain. I don't know if you can even hear it or not, but it is raining hard right outside that window. So okay, go ahead and click next. And okay, so now it's gonna want to uh, have you pick a password. So I'm just gonna type in password123, Password one two three. Now you're gonna want a much stronger password, right? Much stronger, but just for learning purposes, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna leave it at password one two three. Okay, so if you want to add other users, you can click this and add them. We don't really need to. Uh, we're just gonna use the root password, which is right here. We just created um, the root user and the root password. So go ahead and click next. Now. We do want to configure this as a Windows service. If you're on Mac or Linux, obviously you want to do this. Uh, and we want it to start when our computer starts, just so we don't have to turn this off and on every time we want to use it. So go ahead and click Next. All right. And finally, we can just click Execute. It'll go through and do each of these things. And I'm getting a little firewall thing. It's dinging in the background, so that's good. Okay, and that looks like it's done. So we can go ahead and click finish. And then we have to now configure these two things as well. So click next. Uh, we can just leave all these as the default. And finally, the samples thing. I don't know, just ignore this again. All right, so it wants to connect to a server. Remember, our username is root and our password is password123. Check. All right, connection succeeded. We're good there. All right, click execute again. This seems a lot more convoluted than it is. You really just want the default for most of these things. All right, click finish. And it looks like all of these are complete. Uh, yeah, so we can click next. All right, so we want to start the workbench after setup. No, we don't really need to. Ah, go ahead. And this, the shell, we don't really, ah, let's uncheck both of these. We don't need it install. We're not going to use the shell. We're going to use our own programming in the Git Bash terminal as we always have been. All right, so click finish. And hopefully that is that. So that's part of it. We're partway installed. We've got the big stuff installed. We've got MySQL installed on our computer. and We can start using it now. But we now need to uh, install a connector. If you remember back when we did SQLite 3, we had to have a connector. Uh, there's several of them that you can use. And so we're going to go ahead and install those now. So head over to your terminal and I'm still in the C slash GUI directory that we've been in forever here. And let's just pip install, oops, if I could type, and it's the MySQL dash connector. All right, so it's downloading and installing. Now that will probably work for you, but if it doesn't, and we'll test it in just a minute and you'll see whether or not it works or not, uh, there are two other connectors that you can install and I'm just gonna install both of them uh, right now. So the other one is the MySQL dash connector dash Python. Oops, we need to pip install. There we go. 
my SQL dash connector dash Python. And I, to this day, have never been able to figure out why some of these connectors work on some computers and why they don't on others. I've had computers where this first one just didn't work. And so then I installed this second one and it worked just fine. So if you get an error, don't email me and say it's not working. Just install these other two connectors and one of them will work. So uh, that's the second one. Now let's pip install the third one. And it's just my SQL dash connector dash Python dash RF. Man, it is really raining out there. All right. So now it's installing and we're good to go. So clear the screen here. Now let's create a file and I'm going to call this crm.py because we're creating a customer relationship management tool, CRM. Uh, and you see, this is just the same starter text that we've used forever. And what we need to do now is import the MySQL dot connector, right? So I know we installed MySQL dash connector. But now we're in, we're importing MySQL dot connector. Now, if you had to install one of those other two connectors, the MySQL dash connector dash Python or the MySQL dash connector dash Python dash RF, then I think you could still get away with just importing MySQL dot connector. Uh, if it doesn't work though, you know, give it a dot Python or a dot Python dot RF. But I think I'm pretty sure this is all you really need. So go ahead and save this. Okay, so. This video is getting a little bit long, but let's play around with this a little bit more. Uh, let's just see if we can connect to the database. There's no information, there's no data in the database right now, but we can create a, an instance and connect to it and see if it works. And uh, we might as well do that. So let's create an instance and let's just call it my DB, I don't know, my database. And let's set that equal to mysql.connector.connect, right? And inside of here, we want to pass three things. We want to pass a host and a comma. We want to pass a user, a comma, and we want to uh, pass a password, and that's PSSWD, all right? And there. All right, so for the host, if you're pushing this up into the cloud or something, you'll have an address, a URL for your database. It'll be a number, right? It'll be 195.168.42.9 or something like that, right? We're just on our local computer, so we can just use local host, right? And our user is the root user. And remember our password is password123, right? So we can save this and now this is Kinter, it's graphical and we haven't done any graphical stuff yet, but we can just run, we can just print out this MyDB and this won't show up graphically in our little app, that is 400 by 400 pixels, but it will show up after we close the app in the, uh, the terminal. So if we go ahead and save this and head back over to the terminal, and let's just run this real quick. Python uh, crm.py. Oh, we got all kinds of errors. Oops, I misspelled password. P-A-S-S-W-D. All right, save that. Let's clear the screen. Okay, so the box pops up. This is our little 400 by 400 app and there's nothing there, obviously. But if we close this now, boom, we see this print to the screen, mysql.connector.connection.mysql.connection object. We've created an object at, and there's this address. This is just an address in memory. It doesn't mean anything to us right now, except that it means that our program worked. We were able to, in, to connect to the database. We were able to log in as root with our password. Uh, remember, it's P-A-S-S-W-D instead of P-S-S-W-D. It's been a long day and we're good to go. So, you know, pretty easy to download and install MySQL, all things considered, uh, completely free, super easy to connect to it. And now we just need to build out our app and tell our app what kind of data we want to save and store and then connect and pull data in and pull data out. And uh, that's going to be a whole new thing. And we'll start working on that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, 
and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 60,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.